our top story this hour, controversial dash cam video just released by Chicago police showing a white officer shooting a black teen. We want to warn you, what you're going to see is disturbing. In the video, Laquan McDonald is seen running towards a patrol car. Authorities say the 17-year-old was armed with a knife. The teen then walks away from the two police officers who have their guns drawn. Seconds later, an officer opens fire and McDonald falls to the ground. The teen was shot 16 times. The officer, Jason Van Dyke, has been charged with first-degree murder. Well, protesters are blocking an interstate in Chicago right now. We want to show you the pictures. Uh, the demonstrators have been peaceful for the most part. Authorities had been preparing for possible protests ahead of the video release, showing you some aerial images now of uh, the protesters on the streets of Chicago. That's where we find CNN's Rosa Flores. She is live with the very latest. Rosa, set the scene for us. What's happening? Well, let me set the scene for you. You can see behind me, this is a major interstate. You see police cruisers, not only from Chicago PD, but also from state police. Uh, moments ago, hundreds of protesters were blocking this major intersection, and now they moved on. So I want to swing the camera around so I can show you exactly where they're going and the speed at which they're moving. You can see back here that these uh, protesters are uh, taking the street and be right behind them are police officers uh, pretty much uh, taking care of, of, of them, making sure that they are following the law. Uh, authorities here made it very clear earlier that they're going to allow people to protest, allow people to show their emotions, but they're going to have to do it lawfully. Now, why? Why are they here? This is after the release of the video of the killing of Laquan McDonald. Now, we have that video for you. I just have to warn you that the video is graphic. The video is shocking. A white Chicago police officer shooting a black teenager 16 times. The deadly confrontation captured on a police dash cam more than a year ago led to a first degree murder charge today for Officer Jason Van Dyke. We're not going to say anything right now. Okay? This officer went overboard, you know, and he abused his authority, um, and I don't believe the force was necessary. Police say 17 year old Laquan McDonald was shot and killed while holding a knife after slashing a tire on Chicago's southwest side. Van Dyke was one of eight officers on scene that night, but prosecutors say he was the only one to shoot, opening fire only six seconds after arriving. Officer Van Dyke's partner related that he could hear McDonald struggling to breathe, and he told Van Dyke to hold his fire so he could approach McDonald and kick the knife away. The dash cam video shows McDonald's body being riddled with bullets even after falling to the ground. And the autopsy confirms the teen was hit 16 times. Van Dyke's partner reported that there was a brief pause in the shots when he looked at Van Dyke and saw that he was preparing to reload his weapon. Van Dyke's lawyer says his client acted in self-defense and the case shouldn't be played out in the media. This is a case that needs to be tried um, in a courtroom. Uh, it needs to be tried in a courtroom where the rules of evidence are in play and the Constitution is in play. Uh, this is a case that my client should be afforded uh, the same presumption of innocence that every other American. The McDonald family received a $5 million settlement from the city of Chicago, but did not want the video released. In a civil suit filed by a journalist, a judge ordered the video should be made public. Now community leaders and the city of Chicago are on edge, preparing for outrage and protests. Will we use this episode in this moment to build bridges that bring us together as a city? or we allow it to become a way that erects barriers that tear us apart as a city. 
Now you can see behind me that authorities here are going to reopen the ramp after uh, protesters blocked the highway for uh, probably 15, 20 minutes. They've been very mobile, moving from one street to the next around downtown Chicago, trying to deliver their message. Now, Aisha, I've got to tell you, a lot of these protesters saying that these protests will continue. They want to have an economic impact, and that's why they want to march down Michigan Avenue, one of the main avenues here in Chicago. Aisha. Rosa, people have been on the streets for a number of hours now. What's your sense? Are, are the crowds growing? You know, the crowd has been thinning out as the hours progress. So it's been, uh, you know, thinner and then it grows a bit. Right now, it's probably in the several hundred. Uh, a lot of the leaders of this protest are no longer with the pack. So some of them uh, have left, but they do continue to march. And from uh, contacts that we have within the leaders of this community, they do tell us that they do plan more protests tomorrow and also on Black Friday. All right, Rosa Flores joining us there from Chicago, where there are still people out on the streets protesting uh, those images uh, which have just become public with the release of that video showing the shooting of Laquan McDonald. Uh, Rosa, we appreciate it. Stand by for us. We'll come back to you. I want to bring in civil rights attorney Ariva Martin. She joins us now here in the studio. Ariva, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, your thoughts uh, on what's playing out in Chicago right now. I just can't believe what we're seeing. This is over a year that the shooting took place and we're just getting this video camera that the police department has had all of this time. And I think what's most troubling for me is that we've heard this narrative being played out by the police and it's completely contradicted the by the that, video. That he was a threat. Yes, that he made some movements towards the police, that he actually kicked out uh, a window on the police car and that he did things to threaten the lives of the police. And now we see this young man this teenager walking away from the police, being shot, falling to the ground, and then continually, continuously being shot by the police officer. Completely different than the narrative that has been told by the police department for an entire year. But there's no audio to this video. What no we're looking audio. at are just images. So yes. talk to me about how how that opens up the space to argue against what we're seeing. Well, one thing, even though there is no audio, we know in terms of seconds. We know that this officer that was charged with murder was on the scene less than 30 seconds and that within six seconds of arriving, he started to shoot. And there were five other officers there. None of them fired their weapons. And we're also hearing that his partner was, was concerned that he continued to fire even after McDonald was on the ground. Uh, also, when you look at this video, we, we saw this with the Michael Brown in Ferguson shooting, the body being left on the ground. We saw a police officer go over to McDonald and kick the knife away, but we also saw them walking around his body. We didn't see anyone go try to administer CPR or do anything that was of a life-saving nature. And, and when what you, does that say to you? Well, you it says to me, me, when I put it together with what we're hearing about what has taken place over this year, the, the, wild, the wall of silence, uh, the lack of cooperation by some of these police officers, it starts to confirm those theories that after shootings, rather than try to save the life, police officers start very quickly spinning their stories. They start talking to each other and creating the story that they're going to put forth. And it also says to me that, but for this video, that narrative that was told by the police officers during this year probably would be the narrative that we would be left with. Let me ask you this. The investigation which led to these charges being announced took a year. Very troubling. Many people asking, what is that all about? And you juxtapose that with the payment of $5 million to the family in April. Now keep in mind, the family hadn't even filed a lawsuit. So the police had enough, the city of Chicago had enough information at their disposal in April to say this case has a value, a monetary value, a federal civil rights lawsuit likely to be filed, but had not been filed. But from their own assessment, they had enough evidence that they had reviewed to determine that it had a value of $5 million and offered that, paid that to the family before a lawsuit was even filed. So if they had that much information in April, it begs the question as to why on the eve of a court order, 
that the video had to be released by Wednesday, we see a couple of things happening in Chicago. We see the indictment in the morning, we see the release of the video in the evening, and we also see the firing of a cop that was involved, an off-duty police officer who was actually acquitted uh, last year. We see him being fired. And, and again, it just, from a timing standpoint, it makes you think that this police department, this city, this district attorney have not been completely transparent. Now, the lawyer for the officer who shot Laquan has said that his his client should be afforded the same presumption of innocence as any other person on trial and is also saying this is something that should be that should play out in the courts, that he should receive a fair trial. Do you doubt that he will receive a fair trial considering the, the images that are now out there? I'm more concerned about justice in this case. He is saying what any good defense attorney should say. But I think the, the more important question to be asked is how come it took a year before this state's attorney would step up and file charges. The evidence that she's been investigating, we can't imagine that had that been a police officer shot, had it not been an African-American teen that was shot, that it would have taken this much time. So yes, he's going to have his day in court, but I'm more concerned about the jurors and them being able to find this police officer guilty based on the evidence that we have today. Ariva Martin, some great analysis. We appreciate you joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, we're going to turn our attention now to the situation on the Turkish-Syrian border now. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.